Hello, welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today I'm going to be adding another cooler to the Cooler League. The cooler I'm going to be adding is the Vetro V5. This is a cooler which a lot of you may find familiar because Jace Two Cents covered this on his channel. He had a bit of a few videos looking on Amazon for value-orientated products which were really decent. He's done it before and normally when he does that they sell out pretty fast. So Personally, after watching the video, I ordered one pretty uh, sharpish because I wanted to have a look at the cooler. Also, a lot of people saw the video and a few people have asked me to add the cooler to the Cooler League. So today I am going to. So without further ado, let's get the cooler on the test bed and have a look at the installation. So there's two metal brackets that go onto the two cooler itself. They're screwed down. You have to put them not underneath the plate, but you put them on top of the plate and then you screw them in. Once they're screwed in, this, the, the cooler is ready to install on the CPU. There is also a back plate which goes underneath the motherboard which has four adjustable corners which you adjust depending on what Intel socket you're connecting to. In this case it's the middle setting so you have to adjust the corner, not the end, not the, the furthest, but the one in the middle. So I'm going to put it underneath and see if it pokes through the right holes on the settings I've got it. having trouble getting the bracket to sit in the right place because they they won't stay poked through uh, this is very very difficult because I don't want to put the thermal compound on but this bracket will not stay in place so the installation is not the easiest in the world especially on a test bench so what I've had to do is I've had to get a a motherboard motherboard box and put it underneath so I can get the bracket to stay in place. Next I'm going to put on the thermal compound. Seems you have to adjust the feet as well to line up. But I've now got it in place and I'm going to do the cross method of doing each corner three times. The, sp the, screw the screws are spring mounted so you don't have to worry about applying too much pressure and the cooler is now fully applied. The fan comes with both RGB control and it looks like you can daisy chain it and also a, a, a a, con a cable for the fan to control you um, through your BIOS. A little disappointing that the uh, fan brackets are silver and not white like the rest of the cooler. I've had to ele elevate the cooler a little bit because otherwise it will hit the uh, VRM cooling. Connecting the fan. So installation wise, it it's not that bad. Um, the instructions are actually very, very clear. Um, you know, adjusting the back bracket was pretty easy. Um, personally, I had a lot of issues with installing the, the CPU cooler, and it's not really the CPU cooler to blame. Um, there is a little bit to it, I guess, because the bracket um, only has very small um, screw where the screws go in from the actual cooler, and they don't really protrude through the motherboard, and you've got to hold or find something to hold the backplate in place. On a lot of the coolers, you can pu push it through and there's something you can hold to keep it there or you can then attach something to it to make sure the black plate doesn't disappear. So it, you don't have to worry about, you know, if you got it in a case, for instance, if you push the black plate through, you'd literally always have to hold it and then try and put the CPU on. So that is a bit of a pain. So yeah, in reflection, yeah, it, it does add a little bit to the problems of the install. But, you know, otherwise it's actually relatively simple. So yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll say it's not that bad, but it could be better. So with that in mind, let's have a look how the cooler performed in testing and keep that installation score in mind and let's how it did with all the scores. 
Firstly, base temps. As you can see, the base temperature for the Vitro V5 is actually pretty damn good. It came in level with the Be Quiet Dock Rock 4, which is top of the pile. But then there's a reason for that, because at idle, it was a lot louder than all the coolers apart from the Red Dragon Reaver. Basically, it was going a little bit faster, the fan, and, um, and idle to make sure the temperatures were kept low. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but it's not really going that much louder. So for me, I think it's worth it. Cinebench. This was a big win for the V5. As you can see, it finished top of the pile, which, as we're going to get through the max temps and everything else, is kind of not a surprise. It really performed well and got a great Cinebench score. Max temp. The V5 is basically performed so well it's managed to draw level with what so far has been the better group of coolers including the Hyper 212 Black, um, the Noctua, uh, NHU-12S and the Be Quiet Dot Rock 4 so it's basically playing around and competing with those type of coolers in terms of the max temp during the runs especially when you consider the Cinebench score that it got. Max sound the V5 was a little bit louder than the other coolers I just mentioned that it was competing with temperature wise but considering the temperatures it got to and um, the score that it managed to attain, I think that's no trade-off at all. It was still a lot quieter than all the other coolers, including the UX200, Contact 12, etc. The scoring ranges that I changed in the last video, I'm going to remain the same for this. So let's get to the scores and see, actually in the league, how the V5 did. The V5 finished fourth in the cooler table, which is a great result. It got 30 points, keeping it just one point away from the likes of the Cooler Master Hyper 212, which is a fantastic result. And there's, you can see that it actually finished um, top in terms of average score and average max temp. It was part of that group. And the average max sound, it did pretty well as well. But crucially, it came second in terms of um, cost. You pay $30 for this cooler. With that in mind, you just got to look at this cooler and think, wow, what an amazing cooler. And I'm not surprised that Jay's Two Cents recommended it. All right, now we've got the scores done, let's get to the conclusion. So as I just mentioned when going through the scores, this cooler performed so, so, so well. It was slugging out with the heavy hitters and coming in at a cost of $30. You know, if anybody was to ask me, could I recommend this cooler? The question would be absolutely. It's no surprise that Jay's Two Cents was so surprised by the performance of this cooler. It does so, so, so well. So should you buy it? Yes, that's unequivocally the answer to that question. All right, I hope that helped and I hope the cooler is of appeal to you. So if you like this video and you like the information and hopefully it was helpful for you, please click the like button. Um, please don't forget to subscribe because you know what subscribers are always welcome. Uh, if you've got any comments about the cooler, if you've used the cooler, if you saw Jace Two Cents video and you want to compare the information in this compared to that, please leave a comment down by, by below. And as always, take care. Thank <laughs> you.